What up, randomies? This is your boy Gizmo GX, and welcome to another IBA Draft League video on the channel. And today we are gonna be taking on IBA's fourth season of Draft League. I don't even know what you would call it, but I guess their regular season, whatever. Anyways. I have the pleasure of being a part of their fourth season and I'm happy because now I am on Goki's turf. We're gonna go ahead and destroy this man. If you are watching this video Goki, I am gonna destroy you like there's no tomorrow, burn you into ashes and yes, I will not let you reborn again from that. Anyways, uh, we're getting a little bit sidetracked from here but anyways, uh, we are gonna be covering the Pokemons that we pretty much drafted and a, a little bit about this is like it was a 120 point system and this is rather new for me so I didn't know about the point system it's just I knew I had to draft some mons using these 120 points that they were given to me and uh, I'm gonna link uh, to the top right here to Salty's video because he had kind of live streamed it and he went into detail about the whole point system how that works and each tier and you know so on and so on I'll leave that up to the professionals uh, as for me, all I knew is I had these points and I had to draft mons and I drafted these Actually, you know what? I'm gonna start counting them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 Pokemon uh, So with those 120 points, I literally spent all 120 exactly just like a great person would do so So but before I even start off can I just take a minute to appreciate that logo? It took me a while to realize that that was an Inteleon in the middle followed by the two new Regis from the left to the right. It took me forever to realize that and I think that's pretty dope. But anyways, let's get on to the draft. And I'm not gonna go into the rules because I feel like that's something to be expected I guess. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm completely honest. Let's see, let's see if I can find the rules right here in this short amount of time span. Rules, here you go. Alright, so there's not gonna, I guess some things that I feel like should be worth pointing out about is like, no G-Maxing or Dynamaxing is allowed in this league. No duplicate, no duplicate Pokemon, no Oko moves such as that, you know, so on and so on. So, yeah, uh, nothing really too much. That's like too extraordinary that I really want to point out that I think it's pretty obvious. So if you guys want the rules, then I will literally just copy and paste this into the description below. So that way you guys have an idea of what we're working with with this season. So anyways, let's go to the actual draft. So when it came to the draft, I am just ecstatic. I, I really don't know. During this time period, I literally was having like finals. Yes, uh, during the summer I took summer courses and when the draft was starting, it was like during like, I had like a five page paper due, fun story. Uh, did I fi did I end up finishing both books? Cause I had to read two, like about 300 page average book. Did I read all of it? Long story short, I did not. And throughout this whole entire time, this draft league was happening and so I was just like, you know what? Uh, I'm trying to remember to gather all my experiences from past draft leagues and so I saw this mon in specifically and I was like, you know what, let's go ahead and draft this thing. So the first thing I decided to draft was Landers. I see its potential, I've seen it in past uh, draft leagues that I've seen from Goki's point of view, from his opponents, and while you can never go wrong with a Landorus, with the Intimidate ability, pretty quick with a Choice Scarf, uh, that's all I really have going for me right now that I can see but you know I'm gonna go briefly go through all these mods because I really don't have that much info to go on but as the battles progress throughout the weeks I will develop more opinions on the Pokemons I've chosen so this is how far it goes towards Landorus. So moving on to the next one that we decided to go ahead and scoop up on was Scizor. Let me just tell you I love Scissor's high HP and the fact that it's a bug and steel type, has a good amount of resistances but it is quad uh, weak to fire so that's a little bit of a bummer but it could still take, maybe can it take a fire type move with high HP maybe? I don't know. I think I've seen it on certain occasions where it was possible maybe with a, like, a couple of reflects or something or light screen if I managed to pull it out but that's where I see Scissor's potential. And let's see, and with its bullet punch technician, that's nothing to laugh about. And it's pretty bulky, actually. It's 
might as well just look at uh, what it is. Scissors. Yeah, I'm gonna look up the stats even though I looked it up in another tab. Lumel. So yeah, it has 133, I mean 130 base attack. Some okay-ish speed, I guess. 65 is not that fast, but it's okay. Defenses are off the roof. Not as that big, but it's pretty there. So yeah. So it has good abilities. Uh, technician, like I mentioned. And yeah, that's all I really gotta say about Scizor. That's why I chose it. So let's move on to the next one. So the next one I decided to go ahead and draft is Incineroar again. I wanted a fire type to be honest and I kind of wanted a bulky one so I guess going into this league I was going more for like a defensive offensive build. Now that I started looking at this that's what I was trying to aim for because I think Incineroar has high HP. Don't quote me on that. Uh, let's see. I'm looking it up right now. Yeah. It has a decent amount of HP, attack is pretty good, speed is slower than Scizor, but it still makes up for it for its defenses in both equal defense and special defense. So that's something worth noting about. So yeah, uh, and it has Intimidate, so you can never go wrong with this. And with Parting Shot, if I could Choice Guard this team maybe, I don't know who would, but hey, that's a possibility there. Uh, the moves are not the best in the world, but hey, hey, hey it works. It, it could pull off some... Some crazy stuff out there. So you can't be sleeping on Incineroar. Or else I'll bite you. Anyways. So yeah. Uh, something I didn't mention is if you look at the far left. There's numbers that are going to be pointed out. So that is how much each character or each Pokemon cost. So as you can see Landorus was from a very higher tier than both Incineroar and Scizor. That's why it was worth 19 points and then so on and so on. So anyways. Moving on to the next one, uh, the next mod that I decided to go ahead and draft was Porygon 2. Again, I keep on saying it, I think this is the reason why I drafted these mods was because they're very tanky and they could do a lot of offensive damage and so that's why I think I drafted Porygon 2. And also I kind of wanted like a, a strong normal type. I was debating between this or a Snorlax. Even though it might have, I don't know if they were in the same tier if I'm completely honest. Actually, you know what? I could look that up real quick. So let me see. Live draft. Uh, no. Where's the tier list? Uh, can I? See? Okay, so Porygon was in the 13, and let me look quick. Was wait, it was 13 points. Oh yeah, yeah, Porygon. Uh, no, never mind. Yeah, so uh, yeah. So this one came out a little bit more pricey point in points wise because Snorlax was actually worth 12 points. But Snorlax is very defensive and offensive if used correctly. So but instead I decided to go with the Evia Light uh, Porygon 2 because for one Analytic may not be its best ability but Trace can come in clutch so that way you could uh, know, learn more about your opponent. So. And also it's defensive with Eagle Eye, it's just ridiculous. Move sets is ridiculous as well. You can get that tri attack, either a paralyze, you can get a freeze or a burn. Beautiful. You can come in clutch with RNG if you have anything good of it. Which, in my opinion, RNG hasn't been good to me lately. So let's see how it chooses this season. So anyways, that's Porygon 2. And let's go on to the next one. So next one I drafted was Dorola Dawn. Now I know, I know this is gonna bite me in the butt, and I think Dorola Dawn was spelled wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think Dorola Dawn's with a, yeah, with a one R. I didn't make these slides. I did not make these slides, but I'm using them because it makes my life easier. So yeah, it was with one R. But you know what, that's besides the point. I love Duraludon, it's always coming clutch. It may be a Pokemon that's limited to movesets. And its abilities are not as good in either formats, aside from Stalwart, that's that's good in VGC. But aside from that, its abilities like Light Metal and Heavy Metal are not that good. But it does the job, it does enough of the job for me in past seasons. It's capable of killing, uh, what's this call it? Uh, whatchamacallit? Uh, the, the, the legendary dragon and poison type from the new, oh my god, e Eternatus, there you go. Wait, is, is Eternatus dragon? 
I feel stupid now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragon and poison. So it could take down Eternatus uh, in, a, in a good situation. And it has to be a very good situation for our boy. But it could take down Eternatus. So that's something worth pointing out. And that's why I love Duraludon. And Duraludon is by far my favorite dragon type. Uh, even higher than Garchomp, Dragonite, Salamence. Yeah. Yeah, I just love Duraludon. Anyways. Uh, yeah. So that's that's that. Enough said about that mon. Let's move on to the next one. Which is Reuniculus. Uh, Reuniculus. Or however, because I suck at pronunciation for whatever reason. I cannot even pronounce anything. Again. Magic Guard, Regenerator. These abilities can come in clutch in various situations, can pull out some shenanigans, high special attack, defensive, and if someone wants to pull off a trick room on me, I got a couple of slow mons already, so hopefully I can scare people from not using this. That would be definitely coming clutch for your boy, so so that there's that. I can kick some butt with Reuniculus. I know I can. So yeah, so that's that. Let's move on to the next one. Jellicent. Now, I find this kind of hilarious because both of these mons that I just drafted are mentioning right now. They're both from Unova, and I hate Unova. <laughs> I hate Unova. But I cannot deny the fact that they have one of the most popular mons used. And one of the main reasons I scooped up Jellicent was because I didn't want to deal with Strength Sap. I know it's a stupid reason, but I just did not want to deal with Strength Sap. <laughs> Uh, that was a big pain in the butt, but then it has its own cool abilities I can use of uh, Light, Pain Split, Strength Sap, uh, Confuse Ray. I love Confuse Ray. I've been using it a lot in the Little Cup League, so if you guys have not checked out this series out, uh, definitely go ahead and check that out. Uh, I have a lot of uh, familiarity with Confuse Ray, and RNG doesn't love me, but that's besides the point. It has a good amount of movesets. Uh, it's not that bad. Not wor Is it worth the 9 points? I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. This could be my trick room on if I'm... Wait. It could. Uh. Oh, anyways. So that's Jellicent in a nutshell for your boy. Let's go on to the next one. So this one was a spicy choice, if I'm completely honest. I wanted Electivire because... I wanted some... I wanted some, like... I don't know, some cool design on my squad. I know that's a stupid reason again. For most of these picks, it had some reasoning, but also not so good reasoning. Because Electivire, I like its tails in the bag. It's a cool design. Electivire can go wrong, even though it's really limited to his moveset, as to that's the reason why it was so cheap to get. And I was also thinking of getting Electric, which I believe was in the same tier. And Electric is very specially offensive. So if I, I'm looking at the tier list right now, uh, let's see. I don't remember if it was in the same category or in, in the same tier list. So, oh, Jolten was another one. But I think it was already scooped up by the time I already scooped this one up. Let's see. Now, uh, Manetric, 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 where are you? Uh, hmm. Well, it was either in one of the above tiers or the lower tiers, but Manetric was an option for your boy when I was choosing my Electric type, so... Uh, wherever he is in this... Uh, let me see, let me just one last uh, look through here. Uh, no, 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 nowhere to be found. Uh, that sucks. Either my eyes suck or I can't see him. But anyways, regardless of where he was, he was an Electric type I was really worth considering because you know, flamethrower, volt switch, and its speed that applies to it compared to Electivire is way better. And Electivire is very, like, slow with a base 95 speed, if I'm wrong. Let me see, Electivire. Let me look it up real quick. Electivire, uh, 95 speed. I mean, it's not the fastest, but it's it's doable speed. So, that's the reason why I scooped up Electivire. Because I wanted to try something new and not Manetric. So... Yeah, let's see. Let's see how Electivire treats us this round or in this series. So that's that pick. Let's move on to the next one. So leading on to the third the last mon I chose, and this was pretty much like the finale. Oh, we're almost there because the last two picks were kind of how do you say the lower tiers? If I have to say so, I decided to scoop up one of the higher tiers right next to Scizor. 
I decided to scoop up uh, Conkeldor. Now, I don't know about synergy in this squad whatsoever, but I do know that I needed a fighting type, and one of the best fighting types, and also bulky, was Conkeldor, and I just scooped it up because it hits like a truck. It hits like a truck, it tanks like a truck, but it is slow. Not as a truck, but it's slow. <laughs> it's really slow, so... Uh, again, if someone uses Trick Room on me, by all means, I think that's a benefit, so... I hope to scare people off with this. And if they, it doesn't scare them off, then hopefully this video, if they're watching it, they trick them in some shape or form. Because, again, I my the way I build my team is so weird, and sometimes I don't even team build. <laughs> <laughs> guilty. I am guilty. No one would admit to that, but I am guilty. I just build on the spot and see what where that takes me. So anyways, so that's that. Going on to my second to last pick was Articunar Galar. Now, this is worth 5 points, even though it's a r relatively new legendary form. Uh, but its moveset is not as popular as you would think. It doesn't have that many movesets compared to its counterpart, I believe. Uh, let me see Articuno. Articuno, Articuno. Let's see, Articuno, yeah. So, how much of a difference is it from its counterpart? Uh, so Articuno is more special. The regular one's, uh, specially defensive. Whereas, Galarian version is actually devoted more into special attack. So, yeah. But the movesets do vary from both of them, so I hope to use Articuno. I never used a legendary like Articuno, and let alone a new one like Galarian. So hopefully I can experiment with its competitive ability. So everyone bring Intimidate so I could abuse of competitive, by the way. Or lower my speed or something, I don't know. Uh, I'm open to everything. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But yeah. So that's my second to last Pokemon. Now moving on to the final one, we got Weezing. Now, again, I'm trying to cover my bases and I don't know if I have one Mon. I guess I do have two Mons that have Defogs that can remove hazards. But in case someone set up some uh, Toxic Spikes, I really wanted Weezing on the field. Maybe maybe because of its Levitate ability, it may backfire on me. But I wanted a Poison type to clear off of all Poison Spikes or... I mean toxic spice that are on the field and that's why I picked up Weezing and it's also defensive so I mean I, there, I know there's a lot of mons out there that can take care of Weezing but the fact that it's a pretty good decent mon to have on the squad and I feel like it was worth the last 5 points I mean there's could have been other options um, as I'm looking through the 5 point system right now uh, there's still some mons out there like Drompa would have been a good shout in Trick Room Dreadnought's not so bad even though you can Gigantamax Apple. I could have gotten Garbodor, uh, but I'm more familiar with Weezing. I could have gotten Guzzlord. Now that I look at it, let me see Guzzlord real quick. So, let me see. It's a Dark and Dragon type. Its HP is ridiculous, but its defensive suck. So, nah. And yeah, I could have gotten Pangoro. I could have made a lot of different switches, but we'll see. What's up, how this squad treats us in our first match as our first opponent is Kyogre Kawhi. And I don't know, man. I don't know why is it that whenever it's a new league or something I'm a part of, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm exaggerating, I'm always going up against Kyogre Kawhi. <laughs> I mean, I have nothing against it. It's just I find it kind of like, I don't know how to find, I guess, ironic that I always had to battle him first week or something like that. I don't know what the words is. But anyways, that's our first opponent moving on to for the first week of this season so hopefully we can pull out some w's and yeah uh that's our draft and those are the reasons and yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video this dra short draft analysis that i was trying to make that ended up being like 19 minute video i mean almost a 20 minute video so with that being said uh if you like this video Drop a like, comment down below what was your favorite part, and consider subscribing because I'm going to make sure this season I upload all my matches on time, and I'll see you in the next one. Gizmo, out. Ooh.